Good morning, everyone. After weeks of hard work and planning, we are finally here. Despite a few hiccups along the way, we have gathered here today to celebrate the first ever DPSI Literature Fest to showcase the myriad of literary voices in DPSI community. In past week, students of DPSI engaged in challenging creative writing and literature competitions. Today's showcase will include the results from those competitions, insights from authors inside and outside of the school community, and more fun activities the students have planned. Before we dive into the Lit Fest, we must talk, out, talk about the other reason why today is so important. Today, at DPSI, we are celebrating the 72nd Republic Day. The 26th of January is a monumental day for our histi- history. It steered the new nation in a direction that ensured progress towards equal opportunity and egalitarianism. On 26th January 1950, the Constitution of India came into effect. The colony, once ruled by the Britishers, finally became independent. The modern republic was founded on the idea that sovereignty rests on the people and India finally became a secular and law-based democracy. The first chief guest to attend the celebration of Republic Day in 1950 was President Socorano of Indonesia. Last year, Brazilian President Jair Bolsonaro was the chief guest. However, this year, there will be no guests gracing due to COVID-19. Following on that same tone, festivities this year year will be muted. Nevertheless, we must honor this day and the struggle of our ancestors. Therefore, the Senate members handpicked jam prompts to honor the history and significance of India's remarkable feat. So without further ado, let's begin. The concept of the DPSI Literature Fest took birth when we realized that we would not be able to attend the exciting and rich Jaipur Lit Fest that takes place in January every year. A crucial aspect of each JLF is the author segment, wherein authors such as Shashi Tharoor and Ruby Kaur come in and answer their fans' burning questions and address their crazy theories. Following JLF's path today, we have a very special guest joining us. She is an inspiring woman who played for the Indian women's cricket team from a very tender age and now works for the Ministry of Finance. She recently wrote her first book inspired by her love for cricket called She the Cricketer. We would like to welcome our guest author for today, Ms. Minoti Desai. We would like to thank our sports captains, Ananya Kaur and Soham Fargare for conducting the interview. So without further ado, let's have a large virtual round of applause for Ms. Minoti. Ms. Minoti Desai is a former Nets and ODI cricketer who represented India. She holds a national record for the highest score, 150 runs, in the finals of senior national tournaments. She's the only woman cricketer who has been the captain of both senior and junior combined Indian university teams, along with holding the record for being the best batswoman in three consecutive junior nationals. She currently works in the Ministry of Finance and now she's an author of the book, She the Cricketer. The book is about a fiery teenager, Sonia, a cricketer who abruptly quits as she falls out of love from cricket. Good afternoon, ma'am. It is a pleasure to have you here. So we've read so much about you and after reading about your book and your character Sonia, we couldn't help but see how similar she is to you. So do you see yourself in Sonia? Yeah, definitely. Because uh, look, Sonia is somebody who was a passionate cricket lover and I'm the same. So you could say that, yes. So is there a way that you've like told your story through Sonia in the form of fiction? Uh, not really, but many parts of it. Uh, say my resilience, uh, my passion for the game, the things that I observed while I played cricket, as in uh, what happens off the field. Yes. Looking at your past accomplishments regarding cricket, uh, you excelled at the sport. Uh, from a very young age, of course. And however, you retired uh, quickly at 25. Would you like to talk uh, more about this fallout? Um, well, given a chance, I would have probably gone on uh, playing for another at least 10 years, but I couldn't. And uh, yeah, there were a lot of personal reasons. So. 
Um, do you think your love for cricket is the same as it was when you started playing? I think it's more now because uh, somewhere deep down, uh, as I could not uh, fulfill my dreams, I mean, yes, it was a pride playing for India. It was a big honor because uh, that's the best thing that has ever happened to me. And I'd worked uh, really hard for it. And, uh, but I do think that um, when I quit for a few years, I was away from the game uh, because uh, not wanting to think about it because like how uh, your generation people might have a passion about something, you know, it could be studies, it could be something else. For me, for me, cricket was the one and only thing I uh, ever knew. And for years, I dreamt about cricket even after having stop playing but um, as time went by I realized that uh, I have fallen more in love with it so yeah <laughs> that's what it is. So since you fell in love with cricket more what instigated you to write about write this book which is about cricket after almost 27 years? See basically I thought that uh, there are many youngsters out there who wanting to find their feet and it is just not about cricket. It could be an, about anything. It could be a sitting game like chess, you know. It could be golf. It could be horse riding. But the passion in sports people remain the same. Yeah. When somebody wants to achieve something, the targets are same. Everybody wants to uh, go to the higher level. Yeah. Some people get to play at the school level. Some people get to play at the division level. There are very few who are fortunate and play for the country, but the, that does not take away the passion that uh, the sports people or teenagers have. And I wanted them to know that uh, it is not really uh, something that comes on a platter. You know, you have to really, really put in your heart and soul and you have to get detached from so many things. Uh, and that is what I narrated in the book also that, uh, Mm, like Sonia would, you know, probably cycle for two and a half hours. She didn't have a vehicle. So I used to cycle for not two and a half hours, but at least two hours and, you know, get to my ground, go to school and uh, to manage uh, both studies and what you want to pursue. Uh, balancely is quite a challenge. So I wanted people to know that if, if you are really persistent, uh, if you just hold on to your dreams, they come true. So, do you feel uh, young girls need to be persuaded, not persuaded, but inspired to f pursue their um, careers in cricket or sports? And through this book, are you hoping to uh, do that as well? Definitely, definitely. And also, I'm also trying to uh, make uh, young uh, lads like you aware that it's not about you played well and you got into the team. There are other things which surround the uh, sports, you know. So it's very important to be mentally tough also because, you know, till, till uh, teenage, you're only surrounded by friends, you're surrounded by uh, your family, you're protected by them. Not many people go outside the house and stay somewhere else. So by the time you're 14 or 15, you've only seen familiar people, you know, you only uh, interacting with your friends and suddenly you're thrown into the world where you don't know anyone, right? You're traveling with strangers. They might be your teammates, but you don't know. Also, at some point, they're your competitors. So I, I want uh, girls and boys to be prepared that, you know, uh, it is not something which is going to come on a platter and you have to be mentally very tough and there will be hurdles there will be challenges, but uh, if you are tough mentally, then you can cope with it. You can't be like, if you ask me as a person, then when I travel for my first tournament, I had never stepped out of the house with strangers, you know. So suddenly traveling in trains with strangers and suddenly doing so many things which I had not done earlier. Like supposedly I only used to drink milk. And uh, when I first time travel, we could only get tea. And I said, where is my glass of milk? And everybody started laughing. Like, you know, those days uh, they could not, women cricketers wouldn't get a glass of milk also. So these are the basic challenges that uh, 
I want to paint this picture that, uh, yeah, pursue your dream, but be mentally tough. That is what is the story all about. So you've talked about your challenges as a woman cricketer in your time, but have you, uh, like, is, are there any similarities? Like after just listening to you, I could draw some similarities between um, the character Sonia. So have you mirrored your challenges in your book as Sonia? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I have, I have, but that does not mean that it is my story. I've been saying this, I've spoken to many people, I've, I've given many interviews and I've been repeatedly saying that that does not mean that this is my story, but yes, like I'm a cricketer, she's a cricketer, right? Now, if you say that Sonia liked the game and I say that I love the game, so that'll be a lie. You know, I have to portray the feeling of this character I'm trying to pen down. So the passion, the resilience, uh, the toughness, the challenges, uh, they are more or less the same, yeah. In the blurb of the book, uh, you mentioned the game being played uh, by the who's of who of the cricketing world. Do you think yes. these games still continue to this day? And would you like to elaborate on that? Uh, well, I don't know about today, but yeah, in, in, in my times, uh, definitely, like I said, that suddenly you are thrown with challenge, challenges of being with strangers who could be your competitors, who could be, you know, who you might be doing better than. And uh, there are things that at young age, you may not understand that you, why suddenly, you know, uh, say, for example, if I talk about myself, I've always been a popular person. I was head girl of my school and I was always liked by people. And suddenly I'm surrounded by people uh, who for some reason don't like me. So that was... I didn't understand for many years why they don't like me. It took me years to understand that uh, they didn't like me because I was their competitor. Yeah. So, so um, that is what I'm saying. So, so my my entire idea of you guys talking to you today is that I basically want this word to go around amongst your school or your friends or anybody that it's it's not bed of roses. You know, you you have to be tough. That is that is the whichever field, whichever sports, you know, apart from the physical thing that you uh, push yourself into, like you have to, obviously, if others are in, running two miles, you have to run that extra mile to be ahead of them. But besides that, you have to prepare yourself for unseen challenges, which might just occur. And the challenges could be different for you. It could be different for me and vice versa. Yeah. So since you've talked about your challenges already and as a, uh, as a girl who plays sports myself, I've seen how many challenges you've gone through. But um, was this like this, some of the challenges that you mentioned were some of these, some reasons why you quit cricket at such a young age? Uh, well, I can't really say that. Um, at least on records, I can't say that. But uh, yeah, definitely. Because uh, like I said, I, I come from a background of very simple and moralistic people. And uh, for me, it was uh, challenging to face and deal with it. But uh, I wouldn't blame anybody, you know, because it's, it's your own, it's your own uh, character that makes you decide something. And uh, somewhere for me, uh, it was important that I quit when I quit. So, yeah. But yeah, next birth, I'll want to be cricketer again. Um, would you like to tell, uh, tell some of our viewers and just uh, people in general a little bit about your book so it inspires them to go read it as well? Yeah, sure. See, uh, this, uh, I would say that still in India today, uh, say let's talk about Coco you know it's it may not be a popular game and but your passion lies with Coco or uh, say you decide to play golf which is not easily available without spending much money by your parents but what really matters is that perseverance you know you have to pursue your dreams you have to work towards it and from within you have to just others may not be able to see I always say this that uh, Eklavya is the biggest example. So basically what happened is that Eklavya 
he wanted dronacharya to teach him archery okay but dronacharya said that you are not brahmin so i will not be able to teach you i am talking about how he pursued his passion so what he did he made a statue of his guru and he kept practicing and so much that one day he went on becoming better than even arjun and it threatened dronacharya so much that he went up to him and he told him that you know you have looked at my statue and you practice so now i want guru dakshina okay and he made him cut his thumb so that he cannot do archery that's another story but i am trying to tell you the moral of the story is that if you really want to do something you can do it without any help without any uh, you know uh, monetary help and once you just put all of your energy into something whichever could be it could be your passion could be painting you know you will be there but you you yourself have to believe in your own capacity because usually what happens kids of your age get very confused by what people around are saying that you know don't do craft get into chess don't do this don't do that so i would say whatever you like whatever you enjoy your energy will always be good in that right okay say i like cricket if i was made to play lawn tennis then i will not be as passionate in lawn tennis as i am in cricket so obviously my energy that i put in will be short of 100 so always do what you want to do your responses all the responses and the story that you just shared they all have been so insightful for both of us and i'm pretty sure that all our viewers who are going to uh, hear this interview later would love to explore more about you by the you and your book so yeah thank you so much for lending your time for us this interview uh, yeah. as well as writing your book uh, she the cricketer which i'm sure will inspire many sure Thanks a lot, and I I just hope that you guys spare time and read my book, She the Cricketer. Thank you so much, Miss Minoti Tsai, for devoting your valuable time to tell us about your absolutely thrilling journey and the art of penmanship. Miss Tsai has generously offered a discount on her inspiring book for all DPSI students. So get your copy of She the Cricketer now. Next, let's introduce the event that MYP one to three participated in, Jam, also known as Just a Minute. In this event, students were given prompts, including "I was Donald Trump for a day," "I broke into the parliament and changed the constitution," and "The real ingredients in the COVID-19 vaccine are." Students were given five minutes preparation time for the impromptu speech. This form of speech requires excellent critical and creative thinking. Anika, quick speak on the real reason why the Indian government banned TikTok. Um. Okay. Wait. TikTok. Charlie D'Amelio, India, Om um, Narendra Modi. I'm sorry, but this isn't my cup of tea. Anyway, moving on. The following video is the Harika Vasthi's entry, who bagged first place, representing Churchill House. Yay! Good job, Churchill. Good afternoon, students and teachers. My name is Niharika Vasthi. I am from MYV One B, representing Churchill House in the Just a Minute competition. My topic was: I broke into the Parliament and changed the Constitution. Here's my speech. I was walking innocently down the street when a, ma- a hooded man pulled me aside and said in a rather raspy and persuasive voice, "You should learn to live your own life. Have fun." Break some laws, isn't that it? Isn't that what life is all about? Then he disappeared. I believed this man, and I broke into the parliament where, where they were discussing bird flu. I gave them a vaccine which changed their minds, and of course the constitution was changed too. All bird sanctuaries and bird friendly areas would open again. Lots of birds and. Lots of birds lost their lives and many people were hospitalized all because of my silly decision. The guilt was more than I could bear, so I gave the parliament an antidote for that vaccine and all bird occupied areas closed immediately. 
I was glad and proud of myself as I cancelled out my wrong with a right. Thank you. Wasn't that amazing? It certainly was. The second position was bagged by Manika Kumar representing Gandhi House, followed by the third position winner, Ananya Anand, representing Lincoln House. Finally, last but definitely not least, at fourth place, we have Arjun Kaur representing Mandela House. Imagine having to speak for a minute after only five minutes of preparation time. And that too on such bizarre and thought-provoking topics. Without further ado, let's get started. Hello everybody. I am Manika Kumar of MYP2A representing Gandhi House. If I was Donald Trump's lawyer, I would urge him on funding a lot more for India. You see, I am an Indian. So if there was anything that I would suggest Mr. Donald Trump to do, then it would only be for my country. After all, home is sweet home. First of all, now that Mr. Donald Trump is not the president of USA, so I would ask him to campaign in India to boycott our Prime Minister, Mr. Narendra Modi. I would love to convince him to crack a deal with the Disneys. After all, he is Donald Trump, you see. I would really want him to do something for the farmers' protest, CAA, etc. because he is such an influential personality. His influential personality can do a lot for us. Thank you very much. Hi everyone, I'm Ananya Anand from MYP3D and I'm representing Lincoln House in the JAM competition. My topic was the real ingredients of the COVID-19 vaccine. The biggest debate on social media this year has been trying to discover the real ingredients of the COVID vaccine and why people with a nut allergy can't take the shot. Some people have gone to the extent to proclaim that there's nuts in the vaccine, but I'm certain there isn't. Why would anyone want to infuse nuts into our body? It's certainly not bound to protect us from this deadly virus. From the various scientific and unbelievable articles I've been reading, it seems like it's an mRNA of the virus. Too small to infect us, but large enough for us to fight it and develop our antibodies for future protection. For some reason, I can't believe these articles. It all just doesn't seem to add up. How is it possible for 23 people to die after taking the shot? Vaccines are meant for protection and precaution. Sure, these people were old and fragile, but I would rather not take the risk. Nobody seems to know the real ingredients of that vaccine, but the curiosity inside of me doesn't seem to stop building up. The real ingredients are being withheld from us, whether it's something from nuts to hazardous chemicals to a numbing witch's potion or mRNA. That took my breath away. Congratulations to each one of you for doing such a wonderful job. Our next event is Slam Poetry. Students of MYP4 to DP2 participated in this event. For those of you who are unfamiliar with Slam Poetry, it is a verbal form of poetry which is spoken in front of an audience and a panel of judges. This form of poetry is very important through a cultural and social context as it breaks barriers and misconceptions that poetry is only for the elite class. 
The judges had a tough time deciding the winner, but the long-awaited result is Antara Gupta representing Lincoln House. Even though we're not going to be showing the other videos today, the second position was bagged by Aditi Kar representing Gandhi House, followed by the third position winner, Kashika Lat representing Mandela House. Finally, last but definitely not least, at fourth place, we have Inika Anand representing Churchill House. My name is Antra Gupta. I am a student of MYP4B and today I will be reciting a poem named Lemons Out of Lemonade. I hope you enjoy. How do you build yourself up when you're broken in a million pieces? How do you find you again in this pit of shattered glass? How do you find purpose in the pain, meaning in the mess and beauty in the broken? All there was was a crack, a mere crack that over time split, snapped and splintered. When I realized there was no me anymore, who was I? I is the hardest word to define. How can I be one when there are a million selves inside, twisting and turning and tangled? Maybe I was never one. Maybe we're all made up of a lot of people, collecting pieces of our eye along this journey called life. Maybe we were never whole to begin with. Just like a mosaic, I will be art made from small, broken pieces of me, revealing something far more beautiful, wonderful, and powerful than ever whole. As we make choices, good or bad, as we lose our mind or find our mind, as we fall in love or as we fall apart, retreat the world or dive into its beauty, make things or break things, collecting pieces of ourselves in the most unlikely places, growing our mosaic. But in the end, when we find the purpose to our pain, look for meaning in our mess, and discover the beauty in our brokenness, we find ourselves. Thank you. Now you must be wondering why I titled my poem Lemons Out of Lemonade. Now the common, the conventional saying is that when life gives you lemons, you make lemonade. But I recently learned a new philosophy of lemons out of lemonade. Uh, it's, it says that, you know, when life splits and snaps and splinters your spirit, it takes the you out of you. You have to build yourself back from that slimy, squashed, sad lemonade and rise again as a happy, fat, whole lemon. And while I was writing the poem, and experimenting around with the words, I also created a melody to go along with it to accompany uh, the words so that they are like lyrics to a song. So I'd love to share a snippet of it with you. yourself up when you're broken in a million pieces how do you find you again in this pit of shattered glass how do you find purpose in the pain Meaning in the mess, beauty in the broken. All there was was a crack, a mere crack that over time split, snapped, and splintered. I realized there was no me anymore. 
Who was I? I still hard is one to define. How can I be one when there are steps inside? Twisting is her name entangled. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed. That was Lemons Out of Lemonade by Ansar Gupta and by before B. Lincoln House. Thank you. That was amazing. Because this Lit Fest is such a long event, we are going to pause for today and continue with it on Wednesday. We also have a special segment ready too. Till then, Happy Republic Day from all of us at DPSI.